Good evening and welcome to tonight's Zoning Board of Appeals hearing. Let me introduce some members of the town government that assist this board. To my left is Paul Hennings, attorney to the board. To his left is Blaise Donatio, a planner in the planning department. You're all here tonight seeking relief from the Smithtown zoning ordinances, and it's our job to try to help you achieve the relief you are requesting wherever possible. It's up to you to provide us with precise, accurate information so we as a board can make a decision based on the facts that you present here tonight. We as a board must consider the following five conditions, and they're listed over here for you. Number one, whether an undesirable change will be produced in the character of the neighborhood or a detriment to nearby properties will be created by the granting of the variance. Number two, whether the, <coughs> excuse me, whether the benefits sought by the applicant can be achieved by some other means. Three, whether the variance is substantial. Four, whether the proposed variance will have an adverse effect or impact on the physical or environmental conditions in the neighborhood. And five, whether the alleged difficulty was self-created. Procedures for tonight's meeting. Cases will be called in the order they are advertised. When you, when you are called, please present your certificates of postings and mailing to Mr. Donatio. Then you will be asked to go to the podium where you'll state your name and address for the record, and then proceed to tell us why you need your variance. At the end of your presentation, if anyone in the audience would like to speak on your case, they will be given one opportunity to do so. Then you as the applicant can come back to the podium to answer their concerns. Once the public hearing is closed, no further information will be accepted concerning the case. There are three ways to find out about your case. You can stay after the hearing, but there's no guarantee that your case will be acted on tonight. You can call the planning office tomorrow, or you can wait and be notified by mail. We do have two adjournments tonight. The first one is case 17737, Anthony and Juliana Donnerunham, uh, 21 Wandering Way in Smithtown. Is there anyone here for that case? That has been adjourned to May 23rd. Uh, the next case that's adjourned is case 17743, GDF Realty, <coughs> Southern Boulevard, and Smithtown Bypass. That has also been adjourned to May 23rd. Is there anyone here for that? No? Okay. Please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The first case on the agenda, <clears throat> 17736, Carol Woods, 168 Gibbs Pond Road, Nesconset. The location of the property, the west side of Gibbs Pond Road, thank you, 145 feet north of Robin Hood Court. The property is zoned R15. The applicant is requesting a variance to permit environmentally sensitive land, slopes in excess of 15% to be altered for an existing retaining wall. Reduce the minimum front yard setback from 45 feet to 40 for a proposed 192 square foot porch. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, members of the board, my name is Steve Angles from Woodhall Expediting, representing the owners. In my package is a, oh, I'm sorry. Okay, one second. One second. Yeah, it's okay. Okay. All right. In my, I was going to say, in my package is a power of attorney for me to represent the owners. Okay, fine. Uh, could uh, you state your name, spell your last name, and give your address for the record, please? Sure. It's Stephen Engels, E N G E L S, 332 Woodhall Avenue, Port Jefferson Station, New York. Thank you. I'd just like to bring to your attention here on your mailing, uh, it says we're reducing, we're seeking reduction from 45 feet to 40 feet, but our actual application was from 45 feet to 39 feet and that was included in the survey that I did and also the paperwork that I had gotten from you guys. I have a copy here for you to look at if you'd like to see that. So that was 45 to 39? Yes, sir. 
basically we're looking to construct a 192 square foot front porch on the house and that's really the reason that we're looking for the reduction. As far as the retaining walls uh, were done, we had submitted plans to the planning department. We had received comments back and we are waiting now for additional um, revisions to the plans to make our resubmission for the retaining walls. That's right. Thank you. Um, anyone on the board have any questions? No questions. No planning. Um, the only pr question I have is how are we going to approve it to 39? Mm -hmm. It was advertised at 40 feet. So that's all we can approve it to unless we adjourn. Right. Can you make it work at 30 at 40 feet? I mean. If you can't, the, the, the only reason I ask is we're not allowed to grant more than, than the request what was advertised that was for. So you have two options. Either we can vote on it, and, right. and if the board agrees, vote to approve what's it the 40. What's the procedure to adjourn? Do I have to reapply for the whole entire no. thing? No, no, no. You would just have to repost. I would just have to repost have to be it? It re because it's, oh, right, we're changing. it's increasing the variance. You have to get a new denial. Yeah. You would have to get a new denial. Now, yeah. I mean, I see 39 on the application here that was in the packet. Yeah. Are all the uh, were all the advertisements sent out that way? Yeah, I think 40. Sure Apparently, yeah. 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 40. Oh, I know they. Is the denial marked as 39 feet? Yeah. It's a typo. If you ask me, it's de minimis. I would let it go at 39. Unless there's some objection to it in the audience, it's it's so small as to make these people, this gentleman and these people, come back for one foot uh, at, because there was a typographical error or just some error on the part of planning is unfair. Right. Um, Planning has no questions? No. Nope. Is there anyone in the audience like to be heard on this application? Nope. I have a motion to close this case, please. So moved. Second. Okay, All so in favor? Just so I have an just so I have an idea. I don't have to come back and, no. and repost or anything? No. Thank you very much. And be thirty nine. Next case on the agenda, number 17738, Thomas Anderson, 33 Garden Street, Wisconsin, the location of the property, the east side of Garden Street, 75 feet south of Magnolia Avenue. The property is owned R10. Thank you. The applicant is requesting a variance to reduce the minimum front yard setback from 25 feet to 19 feet, which is existing, for an existing 134 square foot porch reduce the minimum side yard setback from 12 feet to 6 feet and total side yards from 28 feet to 8 feet for an existing eight foot, uh, 98 square foot shed. Reduce the distance to the rear lot line from 6 feet to 4 feet for an existing 165 square foot accessory structure and existing in-ground pool. Reduce the front yard setback from 25 feet to 9 feet for an existing 6 foot fence increase the maximum front yard paving from 25 to 38 percent, which is existing, reduce the side yard paving from one foot to zero feet, which is existing, add to a non-conforming structure for a 45 square foot first floor addition, 742 square foot second floor addition, and a 75 square foot balcony. Good evening. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, Ralph L. Sasser, L. Sasser expediting 1134. Uh, could, I, could I have the applicant first? I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman. Uh, are, you, are you the applicant? Yes, sir. Could you state your name for the record? Tom Anderson, A-N-D-E-R-S-O-N, -E 33 Garden Street, Wisconsin. Thank you. And you would like this gentleman to speak I on would. your behalf? Okay, fine. 
Again, could you state your name, spell your last name, please? For the Ralph record? L. Sasser, E-L-S-A-S-S-E-R, L. Sasser Expediting Services, 1134B, Middle Country Road in Selden. Thank you. You're welcome, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, we'll be for the board tonight. Uh, the variance <coughs> uh, we don't feel would have an adverse impact on the neighborhood. The design and the other homes uh, in the neighborhood it is between one and two story homes. The request is not substantial. Uh, the comparable properties is not the largest, and it is also not the smallest structure, but there are other properties in the neighborhood in the same block, five two-story homes. The benefit cannot be achieved for any other alternatives because the house has 90% uh, of it is existing structures. The variance uh, would not cause an environmental impact in the neighborhood, and the difficulty uh, was, uh, somewhat created it with the code change in 1999 uh, from R10, the characteristics change, and the setbacks were actually less. Thank you. Um, anyone on the board have any uh, questions on this application? No question. No, thanks. No. Planning? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I would just point out two things. First, the setback of the six-foot fence in the front yard um, is quite substantial, uh, from 25 to 9 feet for a 6-foot fence. And the second thing is that in looking at the total side yards, um, clearly the one side yard, um, which is pre-existing because the house is, was built non-conforming, obviously the applicant can't do anything about that. Right. But it does appear that there may be some opportunity to possibly relocate the shed in the opposite side yard and increase that setback from that side yard lot line. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, I'd just like to make a comment about mm -hmm. with the relocating of the shed, which would probably cause a real difficulty because of the this, a, this in ground a, swimming pool. There's an in ground okay. swimming pool right there. Yeah. All right. And we really, at this point, could not even imagine where else we can put it at this point, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome, sir. Is there anyone in the audience like to be heard on this application? Do you have a motion to close this case, please? So moved. Second. All in favor? All right. Aye. Motion carried. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> the next case on the agenda. Number 17739, Del Fuego, 430 North Country Road, St. James. The location of the property, the southeast corner of North Country Road and Clinton Avenue. The property is zoned CB. The applicant is requesting a special exception to permit outdoor dining, reduce the distance to residential district from 150 feet to 71 feet, reduce the minimum parking spaces from 204 to 176, reduce the minimum required truck loading space from one to zero, reduce the minimum building setback from the, that should say rear property line, from 50 feet to 49 feet. Good evening. Good evening. Hi, Joe DiNicola, I'm the owner of uh, Del Fuego. Uh, Mark Mancini, my architect. I'd like to have him, uh, him speak on my behalf. Certainly. Good evening, Mr. Chairman and members of the board. Mark Mancini, 222 Middle Country Road, Smithtown, New York, uh, architect. Uh, I have here uh, tonight uh, the letter written by Blaze. Uh, in regards to this project and the special exception. So I'm going to hit each item as we go along. And uh, we brought along some alternatives tonight to address some of these items that he's listed. Um, the setback of the proposed outdoor dining is substantial, the 53% reduction of requirement. What they're referring to is in a special exception for outdoor seating, um, it's required generally to have a 150 foot setback for outdoor dining. In this particular case, and I'm sure everybody knows the shopping center well, uh, the actual depth of the sh shopping center itself is not 150 feet. It's a rather shallow space. It's a shopping center that was built in the 1960s. 
Um, you know, there's split zoning back then, and, and you know, it's the same case on North Country Road that we have a lot. Um, we, uh, we understand that, uh, that it is that close. And we, uh, from the very get-go for the outdoors seating, we incorporated items such as a high wall. Um, we were looking to put some landscaping in, although I will tell you that the back end of the shopping center is very narrow, and it doesn't seem like the plants and the trees last that long. Um, so we, we are incorporating what we can. And if you look at the board that I have below here, I've redesigned this since we submitted uh, taking Blaze's uh, yeah, comments into effect. And what I created was a little bit more compact outdoor seating area and trees and bushes on the outside. I have uh, some small handouts that are basically that drawing, which I can give you. To give you a little more idea of what's going on. Thank you. It's small not to scale. Thank you. Thank you. This one? For you? Okay. What I'll do is I'll, I'll take the board and put it towards the crowd. So the original design that we had uh, submitted for, uh, what we were doing is we had about a 30 foot by 18 foot wide uh, outdoor seating area that we put on the side of the building and we put a high wall going across the back to kind of shield that whole area from the, uh, the residents. So what we've done is we reduced that. When we're talking to the owner, it, you know, this is not uh, an outdoor seating area where there's going to be a big party or anything like that. If you were familiar with the uh, previous Del Fuego, there was uh, several um, wooden benches uh, outside next to that one uh, and it was very narrow and it wasn't what you would call um, somewhere where you could dance around or anything like that it was very tight the waitresses could go there and basically families and, and people could just sit at the tables so what we're trying to do is create that atmosphere over here at the new location uh, it did very well over there but we don't want it very intrusive to the neighbors so what we did was build in the, the uh, planter area right behind it, still the high wall to give it that blocked area, and only have about four to five tables at the most in there. So it's not something substantial. We want to keep it as tight as possible. Now, <laughs> so the, in addition to that, um, other comments? Oh, thanks, Joe. <laughs> I gotta get my uh, thing. Uh, there were some setback issues because of the narrow site. Uh, I believe Blaze's letter uh, is in support of having that. We had a uh, walk in box in the back <laughs> that was built during construction because uh, it became very obvious very quickly that it was a little tight. Uh, a storage area in the back as well. Uh, it's a setback variance of only one foot in that area. And then we get to the parking. Uh, variance to reduce the parking from 204 to 176. Well, that's a matter of kind of an opinion as far as uh, the way that parking is laid out. Uh, there may be on the original site plan, and I did look at the original, and I pulled it out, uh, 204 parking spot, spots shown. But this shopping center has several um, garbage disposal areas and uh, several different things going on and uh, the parking is slightly reduced because of that. Uh, the area that we're going to put this in and what you're looking at there, we're actually improving the handicap accessible pro uh, parking. If you look at some of the photographs of that area, you will notice that there's more than a 2% pitch of a par handicap parking spot over there. It's actually unusable. On the other side, if you look on the, um, the site plan, you'll notice that Dunkin' Donuts has three handicapped spots along the, uh, 
edge of the building, which are impractical and actually do not meet New York State code. So part of this uh, new site plan design, along with incorporating this outdoor seating, we've incorporated <coughs> more handicap accessibility that actually meets the code and uh, upgrading the shopping center. So as far as the parking goes, um, I was there the other night and uh, late night took a picture. Let's see if I have it here. It's kind of a dark picture, but you'll notice that uh, this was a packed night. Uh, this restaurant is very successful. I can't say it's not. It's doing very well there. And after having four or five restaurants in the past probably six years go in and out of that, I think it's a, a, a great thing that we have this going on. Um, we have, let's see where we're going to put this. There's nobody really parking there. It's not okay. really a usable parking area. You can see a motorcycle there that pulled up. Uh, the, the way the parking's laid out and the way it's striped, that area is just vacant. So where we're looking to put this reduced uh, outdoor seating would fit in that and not impact the parking. So in fact, I think we're gonna improve the whole area. Um, so as far as uh, a variance for the minimum truck loading space uh, from one to zero. Uh, you know, Blaze has recommended that to be approved. We did have an area shown on our original site plan that we filed that showed a truck loading space. I would also like that to be parking as well. So if we just have it as that. I know there's a, a lot of trucks riding in the back of this shopping center uh, in the mornings and dropping off food and things like that. And they just park where they want. I, I understand that. That's the way the shopping center works. Um, variance to reduce the minimum building setback in the real property. We address that. That's the one foot. So with that, uh, I know there's some neighbors that are concerned about this, and I, I welcome them to come up and see this plan if they would like to speak about it. We're open to it. Uh, yeah, this is a community restaurant, and uh, Joe DiNicola uh, has proven himself to be uh, quite the uh, yeah, restaurant uh, with being across the street, uh, it was very successful. We originally had 25 seats, and now it's uh, about 45, 50 seats, and it's doing terrific. All right. Any questions? Uh, on your patio, what's the maximum number of people you propose to put out there? Um, I think uh, on that particular one, I showed uh, two tables and two small tables. Correct. 16. So. 16 people you have. You have shown. What's that? 16, 16 seats is what you have 16 shown. seats. I mean, it, it's not meant to be, you know, right. an overly large. It's, it's just to augment the restaurant. And if you've been there, you know it gets pretty crowded pretty quick. And in the summertime and the spring, we'd like to have that option. And the patio will operate in conjunction with the restaurant's hours? With the as, restaurant what? With the restaurant's hours. As long as the restaurant's oh, yes. open, the patio will be open. Yeah, if you would like, uh, I'd like Joe to come up and tell you how he operates and what time. He, he's actually, uh, it's not a bar, so it doesn't stay open all night. And, uh, you know, Joe, if you'd like, come up and say some of the hours. We, uh, we're open. Um, we'll I did oh. that already. Need it again? Yeah, please. Oh, yep. uh, Joseph Dinicola. Yeah. You have it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, our hours of operation are um, the kitchen's open from uh, 11.30 daily, um, 9 o'clock on Sunday, uh, weekdays through 10, and then um, uh, weekends being Friday and Saturday, 11. That's when the kitchen closes. We like to take last call, meaning we'll close the bar, we'll give people a little opportunity to finish their meal, have another cocktail. By 12 o'clock, 12.30, that's the latest we'd, we'd like to do last call. I, I'm not interested in, in being open at 3, 4 o'clock in the morning, uh, nor any near that time. And I think I've proven that. Uh, outside of maybe Cinco de Mayo, when, which we would close by uh, a reasonable hour. I, I think we were out of there by 12.45, uh, although the crowd was large. Okay. Do you plan on having any music piped out there or any? Uh, you know, no, nothing more than the, you know, the ordinary one speaker. Uh, you know, if, if I'm not allowed, you let me know. I mean, again, uh, this is a family restaurant. People like to have fun and enjoy themselves when they're there, but mm -hmm. 
I've been doing this a really long time. I have several places, and uh, I'm not interested in being open late any longer. Uh, what about additional lighting? You plan any additional lighting for this? Um, I, I left that up to Mark. Uh, right now, we have hi hats that run the exterior of the building, which were approved uh, mm -hmm. during uh, construction. Uh, perhaps we would do some post lighting to, you know, for the area uh, if we have uh, low reality. lighting. Yeah, low lighting. Yeah. All right. All right. Okay. Thank you. Anybody else on the board have any questions? I do. Uh, what about what about sound? I, I mean, I can't. I just can't see myself voting for, you know, for an outdoor dining so close to uh, residential properties. I mean, people people get loud. People have a good time, and yep. the neighbors going to have to listen to this, you know, every night. And uh, it could it could be loud. People get loud. Uh, yeah, Steve, in the, in the, um, I understand what you're talking about. Um, there are several restaurants in that area, and you know, Sputino's, which is also within 150 feet with their outdoor dining as well, is there. Um, they're on the front side of their building. Uh, we're, we're taking steps with the, you know, the wall and everything to keep everything contained as much as we can, but uh, the fact is that shopping center is there. And uh, even with the windows and the doors open, the, this restaurant's designed with doors that slide open. Yeah, there are crowds. And yeah, but I would, never, I would never say that the restaurant shouldn't be there, you know, nor would I say the houses shouldn't be there. Hmm. But outdoor right. dining, you know, I don't know. I'm not convinced. But I don't know how everybody else feels. Understood. Um, planning? <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, um, planning prepared a memo that we gave to all the members of the board, and we basically outlined all of our concerns regarding the application. The first and foremost was that the, the setback for the outdoor dining from 150 feet to the um, 71 feet was very substantial. It was more than a 50% reduction in the required setback. Not just with the setback itself, but in addition to that, when you couple the fact with that, there's really no buffer in the rear yard between the existing shopping center and the residents to the east. Um, and the fact that, as Steve pointed out, that People will be outside, they will be dining, they will be having a good time, there will be noise. You know, the reduced setback is going to bring that noise closer to the rear yards of the residents. And uh, there's really no way, other than from what I see on, um, on Mark's revised proposal, on how to buffer it. It does look like there is some kind of buffer being proposed here, a wall with landscaping on the other side of it, to what extent that's going to cut back on the amount of noise coming from the outdoor dining, I don't know. We haven't really had an opportunity to look at it. Um, but for the outdoor dining itself, I think the noise and the proximity and the odors that will also come from the food and, and whatnot is go going to be an issue for the residents. The other big item uh, is the parking. The site right now operates with a parking deficit. and. Uh, not just for this site, but also for the site where Spontino's is. When Spontino's, and I can't remember what the name of the original restaurant that went there that was originally approved, uh, they were approved a very substantial parking reduction based on the fact that they were going to have a cross access easement and utilize some of the parking on this site for the Spontino's restaurant. So operating with the deficit that's there now, and reducing it even further is only going to exacerbate the parking problem with this shopping center and with the Spontino's restaurant that's sharing the parking with them. Um, it also seems that, you know, if the board were inclined to approve something like this and looking at an application like this in the future at some other place where there's a substantially reduced setback, there's no buffer able to be put in place, there's issues with parking, it could create a precedent in, in reviewing and possibly approving applications like this in the future. All right, thank you. You want me to call the... Uh, well, can the, I respond to some of that? Certainly. Okay, uh, first, um, well, I mean, we are trying to put a buffer zone in there, and uh, we are also reducing the number of tables that we originally did, and we are, you know, making this a family-oriented outside patio. We're not looking to uh, make this a, a noisy place. Um, 
We are, however, I, yeah, we are a restaurant that is located uh, very close. You have a kitchen system that is uh, operating. Uh, there are going to be odors, and, it's, and anything in the outdoor patio is not going to be any more substantial than what is happening in the kitchen as far as smells go. Uh, as far as Spuntino's, uh, sure, their uh, parking lot has been opened up to this one. Um, it took a few spots uh, you know, for that to open up. Uh, they uh, as far as I'm concerned, it, it actually adds to Del Fuego's ability because some people park over there and walk over. Um, yeah, it, an additional parking, which I can't count on this this count, but uh, it is what it is. Um, yeah, it it's uh, yeah. I always say that this whole area is very tough, and I understand that. And we are going to do whatever we can to to buffer this zone, and. Uh, yeah, I think this special exception is warranted because it, he has the ability to have a few seats out there. There is a space there. We've proven that there's really no parking. The parking that's there is uh, completely outdated. It's wrong. Uh, we'd like to update it. He'd like to put some improvements into the site, and I think this is a good way to do it, and it's kind of a balance for the owner and you know, to, to bring a little more uh, renovation to this. You've, he's already proven that. Uh, he's already redone the whole outside of this building. If you remember what this looked like, it was, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, well, go look at the rest of the shopping center. It's, uh, it's still that antiquated look. Um, yeah, I, I think this is a good uh, addition to this restaurant. I, I don't think it's gonna be very impactful because we're taking these steps and we're mindful of it and he's a good operator. And uh, you know, we're willing to talk about it, let me know. Thank you. Thanks. Is there anyone in the audience like to be heard on this application? Come on up, please. Could you state your name, spell your last name, and give your address for the record, please? Sure. It's uh, Mike Kozerski, K-O-Z-Y-R-S-K-I, 53A Claremont Avenue, St. James. Um, good evening. Thank you for listening, taking the time to listen to our concerns. In regards to Del Fuego's request for variance and special exemption submitted, and in this case, we just don't think it's a right fit for our neighborhood just because we appreciate the business, the businessman, he's a good model, he runs a very good business, but when they just moved across the street, it was not proposed to be outdoor dining. And those of us that live in that area, when you're gonna move it within 150 feet as the regulations now, you're gonna move it within about 71 feet or even now. I, don't, I didn't see these updated drawings. I did take a look at the previous drawings and so I can't really respond to the height of the wall and things like that, but the noise will be there. I mean, the noise is gonna be there and it's not that it's a family place, it's fine, but people will be outside consuming alcohol, drinking, and you know, they just get a little boisterous and a little loud. And it'll be a nuisance to the, the surrounding neighborhoods. And basically, there are currently two speakers outside on Del Fuego and we hear them. I mean, it's not that it's loud, but you hear it when you're in your backyard, you do hear the noise that's coming off. The previous location, they used to have televisions outside. Um, not that it gets televisions, but it's just when people are congregating, it's going to pipe more noise into the area. Basically, you know, like what was mentioned, you're looking to reduce the uh, town requirement by over 50%, and in the meantime, reduce the parking by, you know, which is act like it was mentioned, was exasperated just because of the fact that the dumpsters and the storage containers back there. So in reality, there's probably about a dozen or so less parking places. Um, we have nothing against Del Fuego. We think, you know, they had a little issue on uh, Friday night, Cinco de Mayo, which is kind of understood the place is packed, but the owner did do the right thing and took care of it. The situation was re uh, resolved. Um, regarding, you know, regarding the um, truck loading also, now that, that plan has been changed, so what I have to say really doesn't apply. But um, the basic concern is when trucks park back there, if there's a lot of people in the shopping center that you know, the, the alleyway will be blocked. If there's an emergency, fire, having to begin some other sort of emergency, fire, you know, the, people cannot leave, leave and emergency services cannot get in properly. Um, they said, and also with the, I think the occupancy load currently is about 105 in Del Fuego. On the previous drawing, it showed a 40, uh, 40 you know, uh, people uh, maximum. So you're increasing by 40% roughly, the maximum capacity of the restaurant. Which, it's good. I mean, the restaurant, they did a lot of improvements. It looks great. We're, we want to be support. We want to be good neighbors and support the restaurant, which we did. We didn't subject any, 
any uh, counter proposals to what the, you know, when the original variants think it's a good thing for the neighborhood. But um, basically what we'd like to do is, uh, if the board would decline the special exemption for the setback and the parking and the truck loading. And we request that it be denied and we have a petition with 54 signatures from neighbors all in that area that would agree with that situation. Should I give you a copy or? If you'd like. Thank you. And I could, just in conclusion, it was basically, we're not against El Fuego. We like the way the owner operates. He does operate a good business, but it's just, I don't think it's a good fit in the neighborhood. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Anyone else? Come on up. Um, Good evening. Good evening. How are you? My name is Alfred Chandler. I live at 55 Tillotson Avenue. Chandler, C-H-A-N-D-L-E-R. I lived on, uh, I've lived on Tillotson Avenue for my entire life, for 47 years. Um, this shopping center has been an eyesore for just about all 47 years of it. Um, Mr. Di Nicola has been the first owner that has taken this place to a, a better place. It looks fantastic um, for our neighborhood. It's, it's become a, a great location for everyone to meet up and, and see people that you haven't seen in a long time. Um, and I've, we really appreciate his business there. Um, in fairness uh, to Mr. Dina Colon with the petition, I am one of those neighbors who I declined to sign it, but I, I know for a fact that um, not all of those people understand that there's also a wall and buffers being placed in. Um, they were explained that there's gonna be outdoor seating, but it, I don't believe they all know every one of the details, just in fairness to Mr. DiNicola. Um, I think he's an asset to our community. Uh, my, I've, I know him through his children. They go to school with my kids. I know he gives back to the high school endless amounts of stuff um, to the youth group at our church at St. Philip and James. And uh, I truly think he's an asset to our, to our neighborhood. Um, it, it is a tough little bit of a location. Um, it's, it's, it is antiquated, but I know for a fact that he has been the only one I've seen in that place that's made a difference to the way it, it, the appearance comes across and the way it performs as a shopping center. And I appreciate that as a neighbor. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Anyone else? Come on up. Good evening. My name is Paul Toto, T-O-T-O. -T -O. I live at 55 Claremont Avenue, right next door to 53A, Michael's home, and Mary. My concern is having to go and use the facilities at the shopping center, trying to find a place to park. And I go to the deli, now I see signs that are up saying, these spots are 15 minutes for the deli. You go to the Chinese restaurant, they're now having to do extra deliveries because their customers will not come to the shopping center because they can't park. These are all good customers as well as the Flago. They all want to operate a business. They all want to be successful. The place does not have extra parking. Eliminating that parking is going to cause more of a problem for these businesses. Also, you have, you have, you have, an, have, an, have an issue with the fact that what was planned years ago hasn't been resolved today. And there is no way you're going to change that particular shopping center to accommodate their needs. The other thing is sound does not get absorbed by a wall. Sound gets expanded. Sound was going to amplify and going to travel over a wall. Sound does not know its limitations because there's a wall or there's, there's, there's plants. You yourselves know. And we hear it. We hear motorcycles up and down 25A. We hear fire engines and ambulances up and down 25A. Sound does not contain itself just to the roadway. There is no parking on 25A in front of this shopping center. And has it hasn't been any parking in decades there. So to have this parking spaces removed <coughs> is going to be a hardship to those businesses and to the customers like myself and the neighbors that use it. We rely on it. It is a place for us to be able to get the foods and, and services that we need by businesses like the Fuego, just like the deli, just like the Chinese restaurant, Dunkin' Donuts. These businesses need to be able to have parking so that customers will come to it. 
Today's paper, Newsday, reported they want to redo Lake Avenue. Lake Avenue has no parking. Businesses have not opened on Lake Avenue. Are we going to see another shopping center that's going to be empty with stores? Are they going to then expand? They may have to hold on to at least what they have now, Del Fuego. They may need to look for a place that is bigger and has accessible parking for it. You can't change what's already there. You can't add a second story to that shopping center. There's just no room. And I feel for the customers, and I feel for the businesses that are there. They need to survive as well, especially in the times that we live in today. Thank you for listening right. to me. Thank you. Anyone else? <clears throat> Hi, my name is Megan Alari, I-L-L-A-R-I. -L -L I live at 51 Claremont Avenue. So I am right behind Del Fuego. I'm the neighbor right behind them. Um, I know Mr. DiNicola, my children go to school with his children too. I know he's a very well-respected man. I have frequented Del Fuego since they've opened. It's a very nice restaurant. I also have two disabled children. I have two boys that are on the autistic spectrum that Del Fuego, we've gone in an early afternoon. They've opened their doors. They've been phenomenal with them. My concern is the noise. My boys' bedrooms back up on the back side of the house. So the outside seating and the noise level, my boys are very hypersensitive to noise. So Cinco de Mayo, I know that was a party night. It was very loud, and the boys had a problem. So my concern is the outside seating, having this be a continued problem. Like you said, the, the planting, the walls, aren't going to stop the noise. So I would like to see the restaurant succeed. We, I've been a customer there. I would continue to go there. But the outside seating is a true concern of mine for my family. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> Anyone else? <clears throat> Good evening. Good evening. Hi. My name is Karen Woolley, W-O-O. L-L-E-Y. I live at 52 Claremont Avenue. My front house faces that shopping center and there's not enough trees or buffers to block the view. So if they do put that out seat seating on there, I will be watching those people coming and going. I'm a little nervous, I'm sorry. <laughs> and also, I'm concerned about the parking. I do frequent Del Fuego. It's a lovely restaurant. And there are, have been several restaurants in that spot have not been successful. So we do want to see this restaurant be successful. We do want to see that shopping center filled. But the parking is not ideal. If you look at that restaurant, it's at an angle. And you have Spatinos on the other side. If you put outdoor seating, it's not going to be safe because you're going to have cars whipping by around there going from Spatino, coming in, going around. A family restaurant is going to have children coming in and out of that seating area. So that's my concern, although the noise is well with the speakers and all like that. But I've been there, and it's not even safe now with the traffic pattern the way it is. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? No one? Mr. Mancini, would you like to come back and? Yep. You want to say first? Yeah. All right. can, can I just ask yes. one question? The young lady brought up an interesting point about, about safety. Are there going to be bollards on the outside of this? Or? Yeah, I had some planters that we drew. Let's see if that version can happen. Yeah, we, these are solid okay. planters and, and gates would be All right, if you could just go back so we can get on the record. So if you look at that drawing, uh, yeah, we have uh, some planters, and you, know, and we're going to rail it off as well. So, thank you. I right. just, if I may, just to address the things Certainly. that I heard um, with regard to the trucks in the morning. We require all our deliveries to be to be completed by noon. There are a lot of trucks in this parking lot. The landscapers use it like crazy because they go to the deli. Yeah. It's something that's completely out of my control. Um, just I want to reiterate, we're not eliminating any parking. Everyone keeps talking about parking here. We're not taking one spot up. We're adding spots. 
So I just want to clarify that. Um, there's nothing in the lot that I'm doing right now that takes any spots up. The garbage cans were there prior. The storage bin was there prior. The deli and whatnot are using numerous, numerous parking spots. I'm not, nor do I plan on doing it, you know, in the future. So I'm, I'm not affecting parking in any way. I just want that to be clear um, with, with where the patio is proposed right now. Um, one other thing I want to point out to everyone, to the neighbors especially, I hope they can respect that. And I respect that they respect me. I want them to know that. Uh, and that's one of the reasons I don't stay up until 4 o'clock in the morning. I don't serve underage drinkers. You know, I don't have massive parties. You know, again, I couldn't control the amount of people. I didn't expect that amount of people to show up on Friday. That was an anomaly. And it's been noted. Um, but I just want them to realize I, I could stay up until 4 a.m. I don't. I close my doors after dinner. My license, I can serve alcohol to 359. I don't. And the other thing is, we live in America. I shouldn't have to be ashamed that, that my place is successful. It's so, the restaurant business, I don't think anyone realized how difficult it really is at this point. The governor has changed numerous laws that affect our young people, where I'm looking for to create new concepts where I can't, where I don't hire young people. So I feel really proud that I have numerous, numerous young people that make a lot of money that stay off the streets, that aren't doing drugs. And this was just one little thing that I was trying to complete the look of a neighborhood where it's happening everywhere else in every other neighborhood. You know, I own seven restaurants, and I am in the other neighborhoods, and I do have patios in just about every single one of them because they're allowing them. Now, do they put confinements and restrictions on them? Absolutely. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. You know, I, I, I play by the rules. You know, and if not, punish me. You know? So my feeling is I hope I was a, a positive, you know, contribution to this community. When I first opened the first Del Fuego across the street, it was a prototype. I was changing to a new concept from I'm an Italian chef. I studied in Italy. I was trying something new to try to create something new in an area. You know, I spent 15 years in the city working to try to create something new for our neighborhood because I live right here too. And I just hope, I thank them all for respecting me, and I do respect them. And irregardless of what happens here, I will continue to respect them, and I want them to know that. All right. Thank you. Okay. you have anything to add, Mark? What's that? I said, do you have anything to add? Um, only to really, uh, yeah, where we're putting that outdoor patio is really not impacting the parking. And if anything, um, the improvements, uh, you know, it's hard to weigh, you know, and, and explain how uh, if we do this work and we redesign this area and we put the plantings in and we put the wall in, it's actually improving the area. And I know there's outdoor seating there, but there's, it's limited tables. It's not that much. And, uh, you know, when, if I weigh the options of you put that in and uh, that design in, uh, I think I did a pretty good job on the other part of the restaurant. If we put this design in, and we get these trees and we get this wall, it's far beyond what's there now. Um, and I think that's one of the cases of the, the shape, this shopping center. It's, uh, it's antiquated. It needs to be redesigned from one end to the other. And uh, yeah, I hope we set the standard by doing this. But thank you. Thank you. Can I have a motion to close this case, please? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. Thank you very much. Good evening. Oh, yeah. Uh, they're all leaving anyway. <laughs> the next case on the agenda, number 17740, Perry Boatswain, DB Austin Realty. 34 Cleveland Street, Wisconsin. The location of the property, the west side of Cleveland Street, 92 feet north of Uncas Street. 
the property is zoned R10. The applicant is requesting a variance to reduce the minimum lot area from 10,000 square feet to 6,000 square feet for an existing two-story dwelling. Reduce the minimum lot frontage at setback from 75 feet to 60 feet. Reduce the minimum front yard from 25 to 14 feet. Reduce the minimum side yard from 12 feet to 10 feet. Good evening. Good evening, Mr. Chairman. Uh, my name is Perry Boatswain. Last name is spelled B-O-A-T-S-W-A-I-N. Um, I'm in front of you guys to uh, try to uh, obtain a variance for a CO that I was looking to get from the building department. Um, the structure was built somewhere around the 1950s. They can't place the exact order, but um, the tax records show that things were done in the 50s. Um, the house doesn't create any, uh, you know, disharmony in the neighborhood. It is, it, it, it's, it's in harmony. Um, it's in conformance with a lot of the houses that are in the neighborhood. In fact, a lot of those houses were built around the same time when the codes, I guess, were just a little bit more lenient and uh, weren't as strict. <laughs> um, so as you could see, like in the aerial photos, a lot of those houses are, the setbacks are off. Um, just looking to, uh, you know, to purchase the house, live there with my family. So hopefully that'll be the case. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Um, anyone on the board have any questions on this application? No, no question. Uh, I'm just confused. The, is this a uh, pre-existing non-conforming? What's the, the nature of the application? Apparently, the, the property was built um, sometime back in the late 50s, and the early 1960s. And um, you know it was built without any type of a permit or a CO being issued. And the property is being legalized. Uh, Most likely built before the requirement of a... Uh, it may be like right around the time when the code was changing. It is possible. Just, I was just wondering how that happens. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Planning? I just have one question for you. Uh, do you happen to have the affidavits of posting and mailing? I do, in fact. Thank you. All right, is there anyone in the audience like to be heard on this application? Nope. Can I have a motion to close this case, please? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. All right. Aye. Motion carried. Thank Good you. Good evening, gentlemen. Have a nice evening. <clears throat> the next case on the agenda, number 17741. Starbucks Coffee Company, 656 Comac Road, Comac, the location of the property, the southeast corner of Comac Road and Henry Street, <clears throat> excuse me, the property is owned SCB. The applicant is requesting a variance to increase the maximum height of two wall signs from 15 feet to 18 feet. Increase the number of wall signs from a maximum of one sign to four wall signs. Permit two wall signs not to face a public street increase the number of ground signs from one per parcel to eight, increase the maximum area of two ground signs from 32 square feet to 43 square feet. Good evening. Good evening, Mr. Chairman and members of the board. For the record, my name is Wayne Edwards, Sawn Ward, Kashignano, 333 Earl Ovington Boulevard, Uniondale, New York. I'm the attorney for a Starbucks Coffee Company. I will be for you today regarding a, store, a Starbucks store located on the southeast corner of Comac Road and Henry Street in the town of Smithtown, known as Section 174, Block 1, Lots 12, 16.1. 17.118 and 67.17 on the land and tax map of, of uh, Suffolk County and is on the zoning map of the town of Smithtown, it's zoned SCB. Uh, this is in the, uh, I'll call it the Chick-fil-A Shopping Center. It's a brand new shopping center located on, uh, on Comac Road. Uh, the main tenant is a freestanding Chick-fil-A. Uh, I think it's the first one in, uh, on Long Island uh, and looks like it's doing very well. Uh, to the south of Chick-fil-A is a 
a strip of taxpayers, a shopping center, a part of the shopping center. There are five stores. The first one, starting from north to south, is under construction at Sabrosa Restaurant. It's a Latin restaurant. The second is Geico Insurance. The third is Verizon. The fourth is a pet value store. And the end cap is the drive through Starbucks location that we're talking about the, here today. Uh, what we're basically trying to do is Starbucks is open, uh, but since it's on an end cap, we're basically dealing with the directional signs and identification signs. So we let, let everybody know that there's a Starbucks there and how to get into the Starbucks and get online for the drive through uh, The curb cut on Comac Road, which is the principal entrance and has a traffic signal, is basically between the Chick-fil-A and the stores. So when they come in from that entrance, there's no further entrance to the south. They have to make a right turn to go south. And we have a directional sign, which is directional sign number one. I've color coded uh, a plan that we submitted. Uh, if the planning department has, wants it, I can have an extra copy as well. Uh, basically to show the directional signs and the wall signs and the pylon signs. Basically, can't take you through the uh, through it. So the first sign we have is basically a small sign that says drive through. The second sign, and we I have pictures of the signs with little uh, placards as well over here to show you each sign. Uh, it's also there uh, as you go through the packet as well. So you'll see size, uh, sign one and two. Mm -hmm. There's a picture of it. It says drive through. So that's basically to get the people to make the right turn. And then they have to make another little right and go down the aisle that's closest uh, to Comac Road, where they'll see sign number two, which says drive through, and it points them into the queuing line for the drive through window. Then we go to uh, number three, which is the uh, clearance bar, because when you go through a drive through, we have a canopy, and if we, a truck goes through there and it's too tall, it's going to take the canopy off uh, where you order from. Uh, we'd rather have them hit the clearance bar and make a noise, and hopefully it's not going to be like the Northern State or the uh, Southern State Parkway where they have trucks all the time, but it seems to work. Um, number five is the canopy and screen. Uh, that's basically uh, a pre-order menu. It has uh, uh, like a, almost like a, uh, an area which shows various menu combinations and things that are on the menu. Uh, six is the five-panel menu bar. Uh, that's basically... Uh, you know what it's like. You've gone to a KFC or Burger King. It shows all the different uh, items on the menu, so you can order, and that's where you order. And number seven is after you go through the pickup window, it's an exit thank you sign. Uh, so those are the signs. Uh, we need variances for that because you're only allowed <coughs> one, one ground sign, basically. We're asking for eight. Uh, we also have a pylon sign I've located on a picture, and also you can see it in yellow on Comac Road. Uh, that has the Starbucks mermaid on it and drive through underneath. That requires a variance as well for size. Its total size is 43 square feet. Uh, we're only allowed 32 square feet. Uh, the next thing that we're asking for are the logo wall signs. Uh, those are <coughs> uh, indicated in brown. And you also have pictures on it. Uh, on the front is a circle. We call it the mermaid. Uh, you're all familiar with it. It's on their cups as well. And next to that is drive-through. Uh, that's going to be located and requires a height variance. One of the uh, good things about this shopping center, if you notice the way he, the, uh, the developer built it, is he added bulk to the center by including a large facade. The, basically, it's 22 feet to the top <coughs> of the facade. 12 feet of that is facade, only 10 feet of storefront. So that when you're coming down Comac Road, uh, you can see the center, it has breadth. If you look at the centers that are developed in the 50s and 60s, and you're all familiar, in fact, they just talked about a center, they would have a 10-foot storefront, and then only two or three feet, and they put the signs on a placard. It looks old, it's tired. This, because it's set back so much from Comac Road, you've got basically 122 feet from Comac Road, you have to give the stores some presence. Uh, so uh, they built this large facade, which basically acts as the area you put the sign. The problem is, is the town of Smithtown has, you know, it's got an older code. They only allow the signs to be, the top of the signs to be 15 feet. Well, we've got 12 feet of, of facade. So we're, to make it proportional, what we want to do is locate the circle. It, instead of being 15 feet high, I believe it's 18 feet high. 
So that's the first variance, and the drive-through is, is at 17 feet high. And then you go around the corner, uh, we have another uh, Starbucks sign, which is a word mark sign that says Starbucks with drive-through. Uh, to the south of this is, uh, is the uh, entryway into the Hampton Inn. And the Hampton Inn has a lot of customers that might be interested in Starbucks. Uh, we would like them to attend to it, so they'll see it. Also, drivers coming north on Comac Road uh, will also see this sign. We feel it's important because, again, uh, and, and the gentleman in the previous case who ran El Fuego said it, being in the retail business or restaurant business nowadays is very difficult, so you want to identify it. It's safe, uh, safer for, the for drivers to see it so they can prepare to get over to the right and make the right turn into, into the uh, shopping center. Uh, in addition, when this is developed, uh, even though the trees haven't grown in, the, uh, I guess there was a requirement for the development of the shopping center. They put street trees on Comac Road. Uh, those trees will grow, and having a low sign or under 15 feet will block the view uh, of, the, of, of, the, of the lower, if we kept it at 15 feet, of the signs. I think Verizon's at 15 feet. I think they're going to have an issue. So in order to keep proportionality, to make it viewable, uh, we need, we need the, the extra height in the signs and in the pylon sign itself. I believe in terms of the balancing test established by Section 267B, uh, uh, the benefit to the applicant outweighs any detriment to the community. There is no detriment on the to the community. Uh, going through the test, whether an undesirable change will be reduced in the character of the neighborhood or detriment to nearby properties. On this side of uh, Comac Road, it's all commercially uh, developed. It basically starts with a, a gas station and the Premier Diner and then the, the Hampton Inn, uh, the driveway for the Hampton Inn, and then our buildings uh, and the Chick-fil-A. Uh, so uh, they all have signage. Uh, again, having Starbucks is a plus for the community in terms of it's a well-respected, uh, probably one of the most respected companies in the United States. So uh, it's, it's good for the community. Uh, whether the benefits sought by the applicant to pursue other than an area variance, not really. Uh, we feel that the signs look better being centered uh, on the uh, facade. The facade offers us the ability to put the sign higher, and as I indicated, because of the, uh, of the street trees and the distance from the uh, main road, uh, that it's good to have them a little higher. Uh, whether, the, uh, whether the requested area variance is substantial, I don't believe so. Uh, we don't go by percentage, but again, it's not that high. We're not, uh, if you've driven down south and we see a sign that's 50 or 60 feet in the air on a pole sign, that's substantial. I don't think having a sign a little, a little bigger in terms of a pylon sign or having more signs than necessary on this large center is uh, substantial. And whether the proposed variance will have an adverse effect or impact on the physical or environmental conditions in the neighborhood, I don't believe it will. And this is self-created in terms of it, but again, the board can uh, look past that in terms of we're trying, my client's trying to do business, wants to have a successful operation. If you've ever been in the store, it's one of the nicest uh, Starbucks I've seen. Uh, they have a location uh, just to the east of it, on, off of Crooked Hill uh, in the uh, Costco ShopRite uh, shopping center. It's doing very well. In, this is a different traffic pattern, but they have a lot of faith in the Comac and, uh, community and town to sit down. So on behalf of my client, I'll request, request the grant of the variances. I, just, I have a couple of questions. Okay. Sign number four, pre-order menu board. What, what exactly is that? That's basically, it's a canopy. It offers the various, uh, it has a little screen showing various products that they, people might know. Like, for example, they just came out with that, uh, that unicorn, uh, that unicorn. Uh, I've heard, yes. Culotto, <laughs> whatever it's called. Or I should know the, my client's products better, but I just generally drink coffee. The Frappuccino. Uh, this gives them a chance. Uh, they're always running new products and things like that, so it gives them to say something they may not have on the order board or something that they're pushing. It might, uh, it might okay. be. Okay, and then the next one is the canopy and screen. Yeah, that's the screen. That's the canopy comes over. Right. So you can see it, and there's like a, a, a screen that, sh that shows what, what, what's in the pre-order board. <laughs> okay. It changes. Okay, so four and five are almost the same thing. Mm -hmm. And then we, we go to six, and that's a panel menu board that shows again mm -hmm. what the product is. Is that, is that where you order from? Yes, that's where you order from. 
Okay, right there is where you order from. Mm -hmm. And that shows product again. Yeah, it shows there's a lot of, you know, it's not just a, a cup of coffee and a, and a uh, you know, two cups, you know, un, uh, decaffeinated a regular coffee anymore. You, you know, your regular, you go, your regular at Starbucks, they have so many things going on now, just the way Dunkin' Donuts does now and, and their competitors is that uh, it fills up a whole order board and people have particular likes and they offer sandwiches and uh, cakes and pastries and various frappuccinos and cool, you know, cold brew, iced coffee, so. Uh, I get the idea. Okay. okay. Um, anyone else on the board have any questions? Well, just let me say this. There is, I cannot approve 12 signs. So I'm going to ask you, is what signs are absolutely necessary? Because I don't see that the, a lot of these signs are necessary for Starbucks. Well, I think, and, and I think all the signs that direct people to the drive-thru are necessary. I think that's a safety issue. Uh, again, some of these signs are seven square feet or five square feet. It's basically, you don't want, for example, you're better off having the people know to make the right turn. So you, I know you're looking at number and you're saying, you're saying, oh, it, it's, you're looking at numbers. I can't do 12 signs. And, and I understand where you're coming from, but a lot of these signs are directional signs. So, so the question comes down is that uh, I think all of them are necessary. Which ones do you want me to give up? Is, is that what you're saying? Uh, <laughs> I guess the concern is you've got a site here with essentially eight, seven, seven tenants. And if every one of those tenants came in and all wanted this quantity of well, signs, this is the only you wouldn't be able to tell where you're going anyway. Well, this is the only drive. If this wasn't a drive-through facility, we'd only be asking for four signs, the two wall signs and a pylon, five signs. That's all we'd be asking for. The rest of the signs, of the, other, of the 12, only five, we'd only be asking for five. Understanding if, that, if, but if it as, wasn't, if as it wasn't a drive-through facility, what they, what, when the drive-through was approved by the board, and I assume it was, the signage should have been noted on the drive-through facility because every drive-through you go to, and I was looking at the Chick-fil-A one, which is a, it's much easier with a freestanding building because once you get online, it shows you. They have signage also directing traffic as well. Mm -hmm. So it, it's not, I think you're looking at those signs saying, you know, we're going in business and things like that. Five of them are, 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 are identification signs. The rest are part of the drive through experience. And if you went to this, the one further uh, east, you'll see almost all of these signs. And that's a freestanding building. Mm -hmm. So in terms of the wall signs, uh, in terms of the signs, I think they're all necessary. Yeah. Uh, if you're saying I have to jetson them, I'd rather, you know, think about a wall sign than, rather than, than, than a directional sign. Well, it, 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 at the risk of saying something that I, that I know you're going to agree with, I have to confess my affection for pre-order uh, menu signs. Would, would you agree that um, if you don't have a pre-order sign, nobody in that car is going to know what they're going to order until they're up at the, at the, at the microphone or at, 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 the, at, the, at the intercom, and it's going to create a lot of confusion in the car. It's going to take everybody a lot longer, and I think the pre-order menu boards, in my feeling, are important. Yeah. That's just my thing. Both of them? Yeah. What's that? Both? Well, I, th I, think, um, I, I think there should be at least, at least one pre-order menu board well before they place, they place their order so that they've got the opportunity to see uh, what, you know, what they're ordering prior to you know, when the moment hits, when they, when they say, can I take your order? Otherwise, especially if you have other people in the car, could be, you know, there's usually a lot of confusion, even if I know there's not a lot of children going to Starbucks, but um, more than you think, you know, it, 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 it does. I, I think one pre-order board is necessary. Can I, can I make a point? And, and, and again, uh, I've been doing, obviously, because of my gray hair, I've, I've, this for a long time, I've done Burger Kings and, 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 and McDonald's and Taco Bell's and Dunkin Donuts. Uh, this is a science and, and the science is not only to take care of your customer, but to move people through fast. And uh, it's not that we put these signs in because it's just loading up. I, I don't think this is any different than any other uh, Starbucks or, or, or McDonald's or, or Burger King that you've seen as a drive through facility. The only thing this has is a little more directional signs because uh, what's happening now, and I'm doing a few uh, end caps, uh, and that went, you know, a lot of, uh, you know, end this is a different type of, of situation. 
Uh, banks are going out. So I'm doing, for example, a Dunkin' Donuts on end cap with a drive through window. It's a little different. So you have to move the car in the right direction on an end cap. It's a little more difficult than it is on a freestanding building. It works very well because as they exit, they, especially with the shopping center because it's so well planned, they either make a left turn to come out onto Comac Road at the light or they can go straight through the Chick-fil-A uh, Starbucks to, to, to Henry Street. So this is one of the, probably one of the best designed centers I, I've ever seen. But the point is, is that since Starbucks is at the end, uh, it's a question of positioning your, your, your patrons in a safe manner and, and in a direct manner, getting their order, doing it efficiently. And one of the things that's helping us on pre-orders, uh, even and it's, it's basically phones now. People are ordering on their phones, so that speeds it up along. But when you're sitting, waiting four minutes to pick up your order or, or place your order, uh, you got an annoyed customer. So it's efficiency. It's, it's, it's well thought out. Uh, it's not going to overload the center because I'm doing the pet value next door. We're putting one freestanding sign on the facade. There's no need for extra signage. The same thing for the Sabrosa restaurant, Geico, and also for Verizon. It's, it's just plain signs. But just like the Chick-fil-A, we have something, uh, a business to operate that's not totally within the store, and that requires additional signage, additional direction. So uh, in terms of uh, what we presented to you, uh, I know it, the number is just mind-boggling, and I had a feeling that was going to happen, but each one was well thought out. I would have put a third one in there, uh, another one in there, but they didn't do it, I, I, because I thought it would have been good. But another directional sign, a small one that says drive through just to point them the right, right way. But again, people learn, you know, regular customers are going to know, but it's a person coming from the Hampton Inn, it's a person coming off of the Long Island Expressway going north on Comac or whatever who's been there for the first time, how to do it, and how to do it right. Thanks. And I, I think that's what this board is, is trying yeah. to understand, is the, the science of it. Yeah. Understanding that of those seven tenants on the site, that if we approve all these, and, and is it Sabra? Sabrosa. Sabrosa. Sabrosa comes in and says, oh, well, we want some ground signs, too, to get people to art. It, it becomes more and more difficult for us to say no when we're, when we're granting it. Now, in terms of, just in terms of Sabrosa, there, in terms of view, they have, the, they have the best location. They're the north end cap. As soon as you drive through, you're looking at whatever sign they're going to put up. I don't think they have a sign yet because they're not open yet. They haven't, they're going to be before this board probably. And we're, there's nowhere else to put a directional sign. They're, you're, you're facing them. Right. We're south of that. Mm -hmm. uh, the way 10 years ago or 15 years ago this would have been designed, there would have been a curb cut. There would have been two curb cuts on this, on, for this group of stores. One at the south end, one at the north end, so that a person driving in the Starbucks would have made the right turn and seen it right up front and gotten online. Uh, this was a very intelligent design and, 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 and well-managed design, at least I think. Yeah. Is well, one of the, in, the, in the interest of, obviously, you're representing your client, so you, you most likely won't agree with me, but, but I think what I'm hearing is perhaps one of those pre-order menu boards um, this board may be against, mm -hmm. and then for me, the, the redundancy of the drive-through, drive-through, drive-through on the walls um, kind of, I mean, it may get the, the tenant's message out there that they have a drive-through, but it, it, it's kind of adding signage on a building that, you know, the one that's facing um, south, I guess, where you see Starbucks and that word mark. I think, we, I, I think we can get rid of that one. Yeah, I, I, that's what I was going to say. Is you, you're not telling anybody anything that isn't going to see the 20 cars lining up no, there. Is going to know? No, I, I think that's just. I think that's one that that can be dropped. Okay. So I, I think the, the that drive-through sign is, is is I think the and you know I, so I, I think that's one that we 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 could live without. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, not that I, you know. Again, uh, they, they, they're much <laughs> I'm smarter. Only one person. They're they're much smarter than I am. But I think that's a sign that that could be dropped. But I think the the, the others are necessary, and the pre-order boards are necessary. Uh, it, it's 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 a tough business. Uh, I came from a retail family, and you know, uh, it's, it's hard. It's hard. It's hard to make a living in retail yeah. and, and, and in the restaurant business. Hey. So. Uh, planning. Uh, I'm sure I'm going to reiterate uh, quite a bit um, of what some of the board members have already said, but obviously, 12 signs, ground and wall for one business that's in a multi-tenant shopping center of six tenants 
is extremely substantial. Uh, given the fact that should the board even consider approving something like this, and the other tenants in that shopping center come before the board and say, you granted Starbucks all of these variances for these signs, why can't I have it? You're now looking at a shopping center with six tenants that have a total of 72 wall and ground signs. But they don't all have drive throughs But they don't all have drive throughs which takes me to my second point. Even if you factor out the drive through aspect, there's a total of five signs out of the 12 that identify the drive through which leaves seven signs. So seven times six is 42 signs for the six tenants in one shopping center. That's still a substantial amount of signage. Uh, there are five signs that identify the drive through There are three menu boards. Steve's favorite pre-order menu board, mm -hmm. <laughs> and I wouldn't take that away from him. Oh. But there are two other menu boards. There's right. one where you're sitting underneath this nice little canopy and you're looking at a screen that scrolls and tells you what's there and you're ordering there. And there's another five panel menu board that's off in the distance that you can look at and choose even more items. Um, it just, it's, I can't reiterate enough, it's a lot of signage for that site. And I think, you know, this is my own personal opinion regarding Starbucks. Starbucks has been around a long time. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not a new company. It's not a company that's striving to get near the top. They're already at the top. The majority of Starbucks clientele are repeat customers. Most of them can probably recite their menu to you from memory. Uh, I don't think that people who frequent a Starbucks or a Dunkin' Donuts or another type of specialty drink store need all that signage to guide them there and to tell them what's available for purchase. Thank you. Can I respond? Certainly. Uh, well, first of all, I, I think that's incorrect. Sears at one time was the, was the top of the line also, but we, we look what's happened to Sears. Uh, I think they're business people. The menu is changing all the time. Uh, regarding the signage, uh, first of all, the landlord uh, controls a lot of the signage on this. No other, no other uh, of these other tenants that come in this are getting a pylon sign. This was a privilege granted to Starbucks because of the value of Starbucks. It's a AAA tenant. It really sets the tone for the finance. That and Chick-fil-A basically set the tone for the, uh, for the financial stability of the shopping center because it makes it bankable. Uh, so uh, I think the signs are, 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 are good. If, if I had to give up another sign, uh, and I, I think all these signs in terms of the, uh, of the ground signs, uh, of the ground signs are important. I think we could probably uh, lose the, uh, the uh, word mark sign on the south side of the building. Uh, I think that's uh, you know, it's something that could be given up. Uh, again, uh, there'll be enough activity. The, the other sign will be seen. The front sign, the, the circle, the mermaid will be seen. But I think those are the two. I think the other signs are very nurse necessary to the ordering process itself. And again, um, we're, not off, we're not doing anything different than any of the Starbucks in any other town on Long Island uh, in terms of it. So. Let me ask you about the, uh, do you need to sign that says, thank you? <laughs> oh, <laughs> I mean, if, if, if you don't want us to say thank you to our patrons, uh, you know, if, if, that, if that will help the board make a decision, uh, I, I think that's something we give. It's on the back end of the building. No one's going to see it except the, the customers of, of, of Starbucks. So if, 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 it's, if thank you, if you want to get rid of thank you, uh, and you're right. Said go home. Yeah, you know, and, and I don't think any other, I don't think any of the stores are putting thank you signs out either. So, uh, but you know, I think it's just a courtesy that a lot of a lot of the fast food places have. They like to put a, th a thank you sign uh, up. I, I, but if you want to dump that, I can dump that. I didn't even think of that one. But that's some. Those are three signs we could. We don't want to get rid of, but we can get rid of. Okay. They'll just blame the attorney. All right. Okay. Um, Anyone in the audience like to be heard on this application? Nope. Can I have a motion to close this case, please? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carried. Thank you. Thank you. What's that?
you saving it? Yeah. I'll just put it in for the record. Uh, again, I'm on the next case. Oh, you're doing the next case yeah. also? Okay. 14 signs for pet value. <laughs> <laughs> so the pet store, we had to go? <laughs> All right. Uh, Please. <laughs> the next case on the agenda, 17742 Pet Value, 650 to 670 Comac Road, Comac, the location of the property, the southeast corner of Comac Road and Henry Street, the property is owned SCB. The applicant is requesting a variance to increase the maximum height of a wall sign from 15 feet to 20 feet. Good evening, Mr. Chairman. For the record, uh, my name is Wayne Edwards, Sawn Ward, Kashik Nano, 333 Earl Ovington Boulevard, Uniondale, New York. Uh, I am the attorney for Starlight National Signs, who is representing Pet Value. Uh, they're the sign company. Uh, we're again before you today regarding the uh, Chick fil A shopping center uh, <coughs> located on the southeast corner of Comac Road and uh, Henry Street. Uh, as I indicated in my previous application, the shopping center has other tenants in the buildings to the south of the uh, Chick-fil-A at Sabroso Latin Restaurant, uh, Geico, Verizon, and Starbucks, and the Pet Value. Uh, the Pet Value is located between the Geico and the Starbucks instead of a 3,000 square foot store. The applicant is proposing only one sign on the facade. Uh, the facade at that point is a little dip. It's probably around 20, 21 feet, 21 and a half feet. They want to put a uh, illuminated sign which reads, Pet Value, Your Pet, Your Store. Uh, the sign does not comply with Section 322, 69 of the Town Zoning Code, which allows the sign to be 15 feet high. Uh, as I indicated previously, the way the facade on this shopping center is large, uh, and it's set back over 120 feet from Comac Road. Uh, what we're proposing is a, the sign itself, uh, which is going to be uh, six feet six inches high and 17 feet six inches wide. This is the largest store in the uh, in the shopping center. Uh, pet value is uh, on the small side of uh, like Petco and things like sell that thing, uh, stores like that. It sells uh, basically uh, domestic uh, supplies for domesticated animals such as dogs and cats. Uh, <coughs> including food, leashes, collars, grooming supplies, and other accessory items. Uh, this and the Verizon are the only retail shop, uh, stores in the center. Uh, this sign is important, especially for a retailer like Pet Value, to give notice to people traveling on Comac Road uh, until uh, that people come off Comac Road and, and pick up supplies for their pets. It, it locates it. Uh, so the size of the sign, uh, which doesn't require a variance in terms of uh, the size, but in terms of height, uh, does require a variance, is centered on the, uh, on the facade. It's up a little high. It's probably almost as high as you can get it so that it can be noticeable by Comac Road. And uh, the fact that pet value has to compete with Amazon uh, makes it more difficult for them than even Starbucks because you can't get Starbucks from, from Amazon, but you can get your pet supplies from them. And it's a very competitive business, so they're trying to attract as many people uh, as yeah. they can. And that basically, uh, in terms of doing the test, in terms of the benefit to the uh, applicant versus the detriment to the community, the balancing test, there is no detriment to the community. It's a good looking sign. It's one that they use for all their stores. And there'll be no undesirable change in the neighborhood. This is commercial property. And whether the benefit sought by the applicant can be achieved by some other method, not really. And when the requested area variance is substantial, we don't think it is. Even though it's a five foot difference in uh, variance, Again, this is a large facade, and I think the ordinance uh, was done uh, back in the 50s and 60s, and it, it's a little antiquated in terms of that. And it will, won't have an in, adverse impact on the physical or environmental conditions in the neighborhood or district, and even though it is self-created, it doesn't stop the board from granting the variance you requested. And that's my proposal. Thank you. And there's some pictures in there and a picture of the sign. Yes, well. we have them. 
Uh, anyone on the board have any questions on this application? No, no thank you. Okay. No, Planning? No. Anyone in the audience like to be heard on this application? Nope. We have a motion to close this case, please? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. Thank you very Th much. I'll bring you the idea of that drive through for the uh... Thirty-pound bags of uh, of dog food are getting heavy. <laughs> <laughs> Good night. Good night. The next case on the agenda: one seven seven four four, Sempire LLC, seven thirty-seven Smithtown Bypass, Smithtown. The location of the property: the south side of Smithtown Boulevard. Six, I'm sorry, yeah, that's what it says. It should say Smithtown Bypass. Uh, 1,600 feet east of Terry Road. The property is zoned WSI. The applicant is requesting a variance to reduce the parking setback from the side property line from six feet to zero, reduce the front yard parking setback from 20 feet to eight feet, reduce the landscaping between the parking and the street in the front yard from 8% to 2%. Good evening. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My, my name is David DePinto. I'm an attorney at law. I'm the owner of the building uh, located 737 Smithtown Bypass and the sole principal of Sempire LLC, the owner. Um, I'd like to authorize Dan Falasco to, uh, to represent me this evening, uh, if it pleases the board. Certainly. Can you just state your name and give your address? Spell your last name for the record, please. Dan Yo Falasco, F is in Frank, A L. AS is in Sam CO, 94 Steuben Boulevard, Nesconset, New York. Okay. What the applicant is seeking here today is to maintain an existing parking field. He purchased the property in 2015, and this parking field has existed in its present condition for some time prior to him. Um, the variances sought are not out of character with uh, other properties along Nesconset Highway in the Nesconset area. The request <coughs> for variances is, is not harmful or detrimental to the community. The use of this building has changed from it used to, prior to uh, being a law office, it, this was the uh, uh, dinners for you, uh, where you could go and make your dinner or something or pick up a package for dinner. It's right next to Elegant Eatery. Uh, just to give you a better idea of where it is. And there was also a pool and a, uh, uh, a therapist in the building at, at some points in time. It is now a single tenant, and the parking has existed like this for a while. The, the larger of the variances that are requested is the uh, front yard uh, setback. This property had always enjoyed a 13-foot. I don't ever remember it being 20 feet to the parking. Uh, New York State DOT has come along and taken land from in front of the property, and that's why we're now down to eight feet. Uh, if anybody wants to, they're going to be paving the bike path tomorrow that's going to be in front of uh, this building. Um, you're welcome to see it. And, and basically, in a nutshell, that's it. We did, meet <clears throat> we did meet with planning and went through their files just to try to get an idea of the history. And to be perfectly honest with you, we came up with a lot of interesting things. But more importantly, I think this application corrects everything now. Uh, however, the planning did suggest, and my client agrees to it, on the east side of the, uh, the parking lot, we are going to pull that curb back to where it's supposed to be by code from the front of the building to uh, Smithtown uh, Bypass. That will, <clears throat> that will not change the variance request because the, um, the walls and curbs and everything on this property go all the way back to the back of the property. We're only going to change that area in front of the building. That will uh, increase the uh, landscaping from what's there now, 2%, to up to 3.7%. I do have revised plans that I would like to, to give to, uh, to Blaze. Thank you. Yeah, I'll pass them. Yeah, and, and uh, we would ask for a, uh, hopefully, an expedited decision because our temporary CO 
is about to expire and we would like to be able to get back to building, make these, the last improvements. He has to, uh, he's gonna be repaving uh, the parking lot um, and restriping it, and I think that's gonna be required before they'll release a CO. Um, so, and there is a current building permit on this particular piece of property with the way, with the way it exists. That's, that's my presentation. If there's any questions, I'll be more than happy to Right. Well, thank you. Thank you. Anyone on the board have any questions on this no. application? No, thank you. Planning? Uh, just so I possibly refresh the board's memory, this, this application came before the board at least a year and a half ago, if not closer to two years ago. And the only variance that they were requesting at the time was a parking variance. Uh, since that time, as everybody's aware, uh, the state has been taking properties along 347 to do the road expansion project. Um, which now creates a problem for the applicant with his parking in the front yard. The side yard parking uh, on the original plan that was submitted uh, back for the, uh, the parking variance actually showed uh, zero setback to the east and the west property lines. Uh, even though somewhere in the site plan file it does show a, a site at one time that was in compliance with the six feet. However, um, we have reviewed this, we support it, and we think it does solve a lot of problems. Thank you. Um, anyone in the audience like to be heard on this application? Can I get a motion to close this case, please? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. Thank you Thank very you. much. Thank I appreciate you. your time. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, please. Have a nice evening. And that concludes our meeting for tonight.